We've been talking to plants, and we weren't the first. There was an outstanding American plant breeder, Luther Burbank. He was already very famous and had achieved great things in the development of new plant varieties when he started to study an edible and very tasty cactus. However, this plant has extremely long and sharp spines, and it was very difficult to remove them. Burbank used all the techniques of genetic selection for a few years, but nothing worked. When all the traditional methods were exhausted and he didn't know what else to do, he began simply talking to the cactus. I don't know what words he used, there are no records about it, but he simply asked the cactus to hide its spines. It seems ridiculous, but you have to agree, speech can have an impact. After all, human and plant genes have a lot in common. Moreover, all of us, plants and animals, share a common origin. Human DNA and that of the cactus have the same components and structure. What information is recorded in DNA and how it can be affected is another matter. Indeed, Burbank has influenced the cactus in a very unusual way, as speech seems to be also some kind of genetic material. And would you believe, after a few generations, the cactus was persuaded to put away its spines? This genetic trait, the existence or the absence of spines, is inherited. And recently this spineless cactus has been cultivated and used as a food, and nobody remembers that it was developed by Luther Burbank, using conversation, persuasion and coaxing. Dr. Emoto, Dr. Emoto put some rice in three glass jars and poured water over it. Every day for a month he said, thank you to the first jar, and you're an idiot, to the second. The third jar received no attention. In a month, the rice that was told thank you started to ferment, emitting a strong and pleasant aroma. The second portion of rice turned black, and the rice in the third jar began to rot. This phenomenon is well known in everyday life. There are good housewives who love to garden and have a lot of plants in their home and in the garden. Everything in their care grows well, blossoms and bears fruit. There are also other housewives whose plants grow badly, dry up and die, no matter what they do. Now, the ladies whose plants grow well, they're kind-hearted, they talk to their plants. They even deliver long speeches, a lot of kind and pleasant words, and everything grows perfectly. I once collaborated with a group of women who worked with plants and mentally determined the shape of the plant's leaves. I have excellent photos showing this amazing fact, a way of changing the genetic structure. The shapes of oak leaves and some other trees were altered. I've shown these pictures to people, but no one believes it. We carried out another experiment, more scientifically rigorous. First of all, we created a sophisticated electromagnetic generator that works similarly to our chromosomes. It produces an effect which I'm not going to go into now. We use the generator to introduce the information from human speech into plants. For this experiment, we took samples of wheat and barley that were irradiated with an X-ray at a dose of 2,000 Röntgen. This treatment breaks the chromosome and the plants die after a generation because of destroyed genetic features. We began to talk to these irradiated and dying plants via the generator. 
It was directing the human speech into plants by modulating the electromagnetic irradiation, which reproduces the processes taking place in chromosomes. We introduced the verbal information, just as Luther Burbank did, and said the following to the plants. Hey, regenerate yourself. We'll help you to fix your chromosomes. Please recover and repair yourself. This is what we said to them, the same text in three languages, Russian, English and German. Plants of the control variant were given nonsense information. The results of this work were published. There is a substantial article in the Russian Journal of Physical Thought and in my first scientific monograph called Wave Genome in 1994. Everything was described there in great detail. Well, when we introduced these words to the dying plants, their chromosomes actually began to recover, regardless of what language was used. We worked with tens of thousands of plants, and statistic treatment of experimental data demonstrated absolute reliability of the results we obtained. Human speech appears to be a genetic material, but how does one explain the fact that the use of different languages had the same outcome? There's some kind of pre-conscious, subconscious, non-verbalizing communication that's transmitted by a human. Unfortunately, I didn't manage to realize one more experiment, to use thought instead of speech. Whoever's thinking, a Russian, Englishman or a German, is absolutely not important. The thought is the same. The verbalization might be different in Russian, English or German, but the essence is the same. The form of the signal transmission does not affect its content. In other words, the communication may be written in any language, even in Morse code. It may even be spoken. In all cases, the address would be the same and your message would be directed to the same recipient. Whoever's carrying the information does not influence the content of that information. It's already a well-understood principle. So, this experiment was carried out. It demonstrates direct evidence of the genetic potential of human speech, and how, for example, you talk to a dog. It's possible to speak with a dog in any language, and it will understand, even though it doesn't know any human language. Because it's something subconscious. Information radiates from the brain, even before a person has formulated what he wants to say in the form of speech.